Hello and welcome to all of you. I'm architect Nishtha Joshi, an alumnus of SPA Bhopal, a conservation architect by profession and a faculty at Think Institute of Design. Here at Think Institute, we bring to you many different courses for fighting different competitive exams across many fields. But as I am an expert of architecture, today I'm going to talk about JE Paper 2 and NATA, competitive exams for architecture admissions. Uh, JE exam has recently gotten over and I'm sure that most of you have already appeared in the exam. And uh, by now we know that what kind of questions come in this paper. But another set of exams is coming in the coming months, in the future months. And uh, I hope that there are many of you who are still preparing to appear in both JE paper 2 and NATA as well. Here at Think Institute, we try to bring to you the best possible material for your exam preparations along with best lectures from experts of various fields. And today also we have curated a few questions for you by noticing the kind of exams that came in this year's paper and in the last few years as well. We try to identify the kind of questions that come almost every year and are very important from exam point of view. So today also we have brought 30 most important questions that will help you in your further preparations for your coming exams. These questions are here to just give you an idea of what kind of questions can you expect in the exam and so that you can start your preparation from this. Please do not think that these are the questions that will come in the exam for sure, but these are just there to give you an idea of what you can expect and how you can start your preparation, how you can start reasoning and how you can find out answers to many questions that you might not knowing be the answers to. So today, while I'm discussing these questions, I will also tell you and help you in finding out the answers to many questions by deduction method as well. And we'll try to find out various methods by which we can try to find answers to many questions, even if we are not sure of what the answer will be. There are many ways in which we can find out these answers and we'll explore them along this uh, presentation. So without wasting any more time, I'm just going to share my screen and we'll start with today's quiz. I hope you are able to see my screen, students. So before starting with today's quiz, I want to let you know that we are coming for, for, with some new batches for preparation of architectural exams. There are three dates given on your screen, that is 20th, 29th March and 3rd April. You can join our new crash batches on either of these dates. The contact information is also given on your screen. You can contact on these numbers and get enrolled for these upcoming batches that are going to greatly help you with your exam preparations. And if you want this presentation that I am showing uh, for today's live, you can contact Think Team and they will provide you with this PPT and even with all the previous PPT materials that have been discussed in previous lives by our institute. The information for the same will be given on your chat. There are a few numbers. You can just message on those numbers and get the study material from Think Institute. So let's start with the first question for the day. The question reads, identify the type of staircase shown in the given picture. So there is a picture of a staircase that is given to you and you have to identify what is the name of this staircase. There are four options on your screen. Helical, spiral, skewed, and U-shaped staircase. By looking at these options, we will feel that they are very confusing because most of these are very similar kind of staircases. Most of them are curved staircases or they are, which are related to a circular shape. But if we try to understand what each of these terms actually means, that then it will be very easy for us to understand which staircase is this. So for your reference, I'll just show you a few pictures of each of these kind of staircases. The first one said helical staircase. So this is also a curved staircase, but it is made in a comparatively bigger area. There is no post that is there at the center of the staircase. It is more like a free for a flowing form of staircase that you can see. The second option was spiral staircase. So I've also provided a picture of spiral staircase. Here you can see that there is a vertical, vertical post that is running at the center of the staircase and the staircase is constructed around that post. You also have to notice that spiral staircases are made in a comparatively smaller or more compact space. So whenever the space is less, we try to go for the spiral staircase. 
the third option was skewed staircase so skewed also means elliptical form so these staircases are made in places where we have a uh, space to grow or enlarge in only one direction and not the other so we try to make staircase in an elliptical form so that it does not seem very clustered or very small it appears big even though it is in a congested area so that is skewed staircase for you also known as elliptical staircase and the last option was u shaped staircase which is not a curvy linear or circular staircase it is an angular staircase uh, sometimes also referred to as dog leg if it has more space in between the two flights of stairs and uh, you can see the picture on the screen so by looking at all these four images and trying to understand what these terms mean now we can understand what the meaning uh, what the answer for this correct uh, question would be so out of these options the right answer would be a that is helical staircase next question will be choose the odd one out out of the given architectural uh, arch options based on its architectural style and context so there are four images of different types of arches that are given on your screen you have to find out the odd one out in this so try to look closely at each of these arches many such questions come in both je paper 2 and nata as well but there are images given with the question and you have to identify the answer based on those images and it might appear that these questions are looking slightly tough or confusing but if the images are given it becomes very very easy for us to uh, either find out or deduce the answer so when you look at all these four arches we see that they are in different places and in different kinds of buildings as well but there is something that is common in three of these arches that is a b and d you will see that the top of the arch is slightly pointed these are all pointed arches and the option c that we can see is not pointed at the top it is a curved arch completely curved from the top as well so by this we can understand that all three arches are similar in form or shape or design but option c is different in shape so we'll try to understand what the shape is or what is this arch called so this is the example the uh, image that is given in the question option c the image that is given is from a church in cordova i have um, put that image here for your reference here you can see it properly in a bigger view uh, this is a moorish church that is there in cordova and uh, the kind of arches that are used in this church are known as horseshoe shaped arches or round horseshoe shaped arch i have attached another uh, image for your reference here you can see this curved horseshoe arch so this is the different design of arch that is there on your screen so the right answer will be option c because of the shape of this horseshoe arch so by this you can find out what the right answer would be you just have to observe the given options very closely let's move to the next question and it reads what is the decorative entrance to a buddhist stupa called so we have uh, read about various kinds of uh, religious buildings a stupa is a religious building that is associated with the religion of buddhism it is a holy place where remains of lord buddha are believed to be kept one of the most famous uh, kind of stupas is the stupa at sachi that is in madhya pradesh so we have four options here first option is pagoda second option is toran c is armika and last option is d vat so let's try to understand what are the various parts of a stoop i have attached the picture of sachi stoop here for your reference and i have marked various uh, parts uh, that are there in a stoop so here right starting from the top you will see that there is something known as a chhatra which is like a small antenna or tower at the top of the uh, so after that there is the harnika which is a square shaped railing around the chhatra below that there is a dome the dome in a stoop is known as anda uh, and then there is the medi medi is the railing that is there on first floor of stoop this is the space where you can access through the staircase and take a parikrama or a circular path around the stoop and uh, after that there is the enclosure which is the wall around the stoop this is like a covering wall a railing wall or a boundary wall and at last this is the gateway or the entrance to the stoop which is known as toran and as our question also read that what is the entrance known as the decorative entrance so the right answer will be option b that is toran
Tolan is the decorative entrance to any stool. Moving to the next question, here some uh, terminologies are given in list A and some options that are explaining that terminology or explaining the feature related to that term in the uh, list on your right. So let's read the question first. Match the elements or principles of design with the appropriate application or interpretation in architectural design. So by this we understand that on the left either some element or principle of de design is given and on the right its application or interpretation is given that what is the exact use of that um, principle in design. So there are many options that are given in front of you and these kind of options look very confusing because there are so many letters there. But it's very easy to understand what is the answer to this question by deduction method. So what we do is we try to find out the most familiar terms in such questions. Try to read out the entire option and then try to find out that which is the term that you know very well. So there are uh, these many terminologies. Let's, let's try to understand what each of these terms mean. Firstly, the first option that is A is vertical lines, which means that there are straight lines from top to bottom. Vertical lines means longitudinal lines. So what does a vertical line signify? We have many options. Let's read all the options once. Accentuates form and material, provides visual and tactile experience, indicates clean and pristine environment, enhances sense of height, evokes sense of stability, or last option, perception of natural environment. Now we know that whenever we use vertical lines, things start looking more elongated. So that's why we know that right match for A would be S. That is vertical lines enhances sense of height. So first of all, try to find out that in which of these options A is matched with S. So we will see that in option A and B, A is matched with S. So the right answer might either be A or B. Let's try to find out which one is it. Now when we talk about B, that is curved lines, we know that curved lines gives us a perception of natural environment. So let's go back to the options. We will see that B is matched with U in both the options. So still it is very confusing. Let's look at C, that is texture. Let's try to understand what texture gives us. Does it accentuate form or material? Does it provide visual or tactile experience? Uh, does it uh, indicate clean and pristine environment? Does it evoke a sense of stability? Does it enhance a perception of natural environment? Which one do you think is the right option? A texture evokes our uh, sense of stability for any design. What about smooth textures? Whenever there are smooth textures, we feel that there is an indication of a clean and a pristine environment. And whenever we add color, option F is color. So when we add color anywhere, we feel that it accentuates the form and material. By understanding what each of this is signifying, we can uh, understand from this that B is the right answer. That is A is associated with S, B is associated with U, C is associated with Q, D with T, E with R, F with T. So in this math method, you can also understand what the correct option for such confusing questions can be. So this is a slightly longer question. You need to pay great attention in reading these questions in the first time only because there is some time limit that is there. And most of the times it happens that we waste a lot of time just by reading the question. So the given images of unusual house design in the city of Rotterdam, the Netherlands, conceived and constructed by architect Piet Blom in the 1970s. You have to identify four most appropriate architectural terms that is associated with this building. And the options are tilted planes, organic, street, skylight, balcony, graphic, cuboidal and visual stability. So by looking at this picture, we can understand that there are some things which are the most striking or most appealing. The four best suited answers for this question are the tilted planes because it is angular, it, the shapes are diagonal, it's not flat. So it is giving us some tilted planes. Then there are skylights that are there in this building, which we can also see in the picture. There are glass panels in the skylight. Then there is cuboidal shape that is used in designing this building. And there is, even though the shapes are not normal symmetric, but still there is a visual stability in this entire composition. The given image is that of green school at Bali, Indonesia. This is considered to be the one of the most sustainable schools or sustainable buildings around the world. 
you have to identify four terms or expressions that explains this building. And here are all your options. Tubular sheet, inorganic, vortex, dome, sustainable, logarithmic spiral, metal sheets, or skylight. I'll just show you a drawing of this building. Here you can see the floor plans of this building and you can see the elevation uh, from two different sides of this building. By this, you will understand that this is not a regular shaped building. The design is very inorganic. Design is very um, eccentric. Even the roof is designed in a very unique manner. This is another picture. Here you will see the skylight that is there in all the main halls of this building. So from looking at this, these pictures and looking at the materials that are used, we understand that these are the options that can be easily associated with this, but we have to identify four out of this. Still, these five are correct, but you can choose any four of them. First of all, there is inorganic form. Then there is a vortex-like feeling in the dome, or sorry, in the roof of this building. It is sustainable construction, as I already told you. Then there is a logarithmic spiral that can be seen in the roof of each of these halls. And there is skylight of which I showed you the image. You can choose any four correct options from these. Let's go to the next question. This is the image of TWA Flight Center that is there in New York. It is one of the most famous buildings by Eros Aranen. You have to do the same thing here. You have to look at this building and identify four terms that are best suited. Options are shell roof, steel structure, grid slab, stone colonnade, concrete technology, symbolism, space frame, and symmetry. So shell roof is something that is used here and we can easily spot that just by looking at this image. Shell roof is a hard metal roof that is used on buildings which have a very large span and where you do not want to give a lot of columns. So for covering that longer span, these very toughened metal uh, roofs are made. Here are a few examples of some famous buildings which have used shell roof. Um, and uh, here you can see the various truss-like truss structures. This, are, this is the space frame engineering. Uh, space frame engineering is where many trusses are joined together to create different shapes of roofs and to create lightweight roofs. So the right options will be shell roof, steel structure because the steel construction is used, then concrete technology because this building is made of concrete, then space frame and symmetry. Next question, uh, here you can see the image of Pransworth House. This is in Chicago and the very famous architect Mies van der Rohe has constructed and designed this uh, house. He also gave us the very famous saying that is less is more. And you can see this ideology in most of his designs. That he gives very minimalistic uh, design ideas and he tries to make something unique out of it. So the options are lightness, stilted, verticality, curvilinear, container, minimalistic, colonnade, and horizontality. So from these options, it's very clear what all this building signifies. Minimalistic is definitely one thing that it does. Lightness is another thing because you will see that the building does not look very heavy. Even the materials that are used are very light in weight. That is these metal columns and glass walls. <clears throat> So here you can see the concept of lightness, then very lightweight materials are also used and even visually it looks as uh, like it's not very heavy, it must not be very heavy. So the right options will be A, lightness, B, stilted because the building is placed on stilts, uh, then it is minimalistic and H, horizontality because the building is panning horizontally over the plane. Let's look at the next question. It says construction of cavity walls as external walls to protect the building from the outside heat or cold as the hollow space between two walls acts as what? So there are four options that what does this signify or what does this, what is this used for? Uh, first is destructive material, B, insulating material, C, fireproofing and D, cladding. So you need to understand that whenever we are placing some material in between two walls, it creates a cavity or a gap. Whenever this material is placed inside two walls, then it helps us in insulating the building from outside. Here are some images for your reference. You will see that there are two walls and in between there is some insulatory material. This is known as a cavity wall. I've also attached uh, an actual image from the site where cavity wall was being made and these walls are uh, there to trap the heat or to create some insulation from the outside harsh climatic conditions. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग टर्म्स इज यूज टू इंडिकेट द आर्ट ऑफ बिल्डिंग स्ट्रक्चर आउट ऑफ स्टोन सो फोर ऑप्शन आर गिवेन वी हैव टू टेल दैट वॉट इज स्टोन कंस्ट्रक्शन कॉल्ड फर्स्ट इज बॉन्ड बॉन्ड इज मेड बाई टू ब्रिक्स आर जॉइंट इन वन ऑफ द अदर मैन देन दर इज प्री फेब्रिकेशन विच मीन्स मेकिंग समथिंग बिफोर इट इज ब्रॉड टू साइट देन देर इज मेसनरी एंड देर इज लोड बेरिंग लोड बेरिंग इज जस्ट अ टर्मिनोलॉजी यूज फॉर ऑब्जेक्ट दैट कैन क्री टेक वेट और लोड एंड मेसनरी इज द टाइप ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्शन दैट इज डन बाय यूजिंग स्टोन एंड देर आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ स्टोन मेसनरी आई हैव अटैच सम इमेजेस ऑन द स्क्रीन फॉर योर डिफरेंस वेर स्टोन मेसनरी इज यूज फॉर मेकिंग डिफरेंट थिंग्स फॉर वॉल्स पेवमेंट बाउंड्री वॉल्स एक्सेट्रा स्टोन मेसनरी कैन ऑल्सो बी डन विथ और विदाउट मोटार दैट इज वेर आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ स्टोन मेसनरी सो बाय दिस मेडिसन द राइट आंसर वॉज सी मेसनरी Next question: The Padmanabhapuram Palace that is in Travancore uh, uh, era that that is a Travancore era palace at Thakale is predominantly built with which out of these four materials: laterite stone, sandstone, timber, or marble. We know that Padmanabhapuram Palace, which is a very famous palace, is one of the largest uh, wood and stone constructed. palace that can be seen especially in india it is the largest wooden palace so by this we understand that there are two prominent of major materials that are used in this construction it's not just a stone or not just wood but both laterite and timber laterite is the stone that is used and timber is the kind of wood that is used so both of these options are correct for this question moving ahead there are images given of two uh, domical structures in this uh question you have to identify that which of these options is not right or not related to these two one uh, one feature will be from left image and one from the right like in option a you can see that stone and glass is written so the image on your left is made out of stone the building and uh, the image on your right the building is made with glass so there are many such options unstability and asymmetry dynamism and fluidity imbalance and movement heavy and light opaque and transparent irregular and fluid organic and inorganic and stable and symmetric so we see that this these two structures are stable they are symmetric one is opaque one is transparent there is not a lot of movement but majorly there is a lot of stability that is there one element uh, one building looks heavy because of the uses of stone one looks light because of the transparency and the use of materials like steel and glass so from this we can understand that the right answers which are not related to this two types of construction is b unstable and asymmetry c dynamism and fluidity d imbalance and movement and g irregular and fluid here on your screen you will see the image of a chair this is a very famous chair known as the pantone chair which was designed by Werner Panton and was made with a new material in the year 1967 this chair got a lot of fame because of the uses of this material and the four options are on your screen i'll uh, just show you some more images of this chair so that you can look at it properly uh, this was named after the designer and it brought in a new revolution in uh, materials used for furniture and various other things that was the use of plastic this was the first chair to be ever made in plastic and only 150 pieces of this chair were made at first because it was an experiment itself so from this we understand that the right answer is c that is plastic next question identify four architectural or interior components in the image given below so there is the image of a room which has many elements most of the colors are very basic Uh, just the roof is very highlighted we also see uh, uh various elements that are there that can be seen in this image and there are many options so we have to identify the four correct options looking at this image you can see some rafters that are going on some minimalistic design basic colors um we cannot see a door or a window here but there are some niches that are there so from this let's try to identify what the right answers are i have also tried to explain the terminologies uh, i have shown you a picture of pergola which is like a shed in an open space i have also showed a hearth which is the floor of a fireplace i have also showed what a ledge means so you can just understand what each of these terms mean just like that 
And from this, we understand that the right answers are B rafters, D hurt, F laminated floors, because we could see the lamination that was done on the flooring. And last option was ledge. Next question, identify the four most appropriate architectural components and elements of architectural composition that you find in the image of one of the courts of the Jawahar Kala Kendra that is in Jaipur. This is a very famous building made by a famous architect called Charles Korea. We know the name of this architect very well and he has made some great buildings around India. Uh, the options are open air theater, geometric, mural, uh, centrality, dormer window, skylight, order, curved column and stage. So from this, we can understand, we can see the open air theater on our screen itself. Uh, there is there. There's a stage at the center. So stage will also be a right option. Uh, what other options do you think are correct for this? You can also write your answers in the chat. So these are the four correct options for this answer. That is open air theater, use of geometric shapes, centrality, and D option stage. So students, I will again remind you that we have some crash batches that are starting from 20th March, 29th March and 3rd of April. You can use the numbers given on your screen and contact Think Institute of Design and get enrolled with the best uh, institute for preparation of many competitive exams. So if you're looking forward to give architectural exams in the coming months, this is a very great opportunity for you. We'll move to the next question. There is an image given on your screen. You have to identify four architectural components that you can find in this palatial dwelling found in Chetinad, that is in Tamil Nadu. So you, we can see the use of many materials here. We mostly see the use of wood and we can see many wooden columns that are there. So by looking at this image, we know that out of these given options, these four are the right options. That is B, wooden columns. E, rainwater harvesting system because we can see the courtyard that is there at the center to carry the natural water flow. Then H, usage of brackets. Bracket is a member that is attached with the column and that takes load from the roof. And I is the usage of false ceiling because there is a pitched roof, but here we can see that there are flat roofs which are made out of uh, wood flat ceiling. So that is why we understand there is some fall ceiling that is done inside the building. Next question is, which is the best option, best used as a sound absorbing material in partition walls? So the sound absorbing material that is used in partition walls very commonly is glass wool. Next question says the Victoria Memorial Kolkata is cladded with which material? So here you can see that the building is white in color. By this, we understand that the material used is marble. Makrana marble is used for cladding this building that is Victoria Memorial. In the next question, we see that the image of a window is given on your screen and there are four options. You have to identify the right option that is dormer window, stained glass, bay window or rose window. We know that rose windows are a feature of um, Western church architecture. It can also be seen in Gothic buildings. Uh, these are the other windows that are mentioned there. I have attached an example of a dormer window and a stained window for your reference. And by this, we understand that the answer is D, rose window. Moving to the next question, uh, this is the image of a door. There is a hardware material or object that can be seen along with the door. This enables to open and close the door freely. You have to identify the name of this object that is uh, that is seen in this joint. So there are options, hinge, hold fast, pivot and knob. By looking at this image, we can understand that this is known as a hinge. This is used to attach the door to the door frame and it helps in uh, moving the door, in moving it and opening and closing it. So the right option is option A, hinge. Going to the next question, arrange from lowest, that is from the ground to the highest in terms of construction of a wall. So if you have learned the basic elements of a building, you must be knowing this answer. We have four options, plinth, roof, sill and lintel. Now we know that plinth is something that is just above the ground level. It is the raised uh, height that we give to protect the building from uh, water, from insects or from any weathering conditions or uh, any other things that can come into the building from the soil or the ground. 
So plinth is at the lowest. After plinth, we see the sill, which is the bottom part of any window. After sill, we have the lintel. Lintel is a type of a beam that is there on top of any opening that is there in the building. It can be a window, um, an arch, or a even a door. After that, at the topmost is the roof. So the correct order of the answer will be A, C, D, and B. Next question, what is commonly observed type of architecture in the given images? So two different images are given on your screen. First is of Stonehenge and second is of Temple of Olympian Zeus from ancient Greek period. So here you will see that there are some vertical members and some horizontal members. The vertical members are known as post and horizontal members are known as lintel. So by this we understand that the right answer is option A that is post and lintel form of architecture. Uh, there is an image given on your screen. This is the Peace Bridge. And here also you have to identify four most appropriate terms related to this building. There are many options given on your screen. And by looking at this image, we can identify some elements that are there. We see the use of glass as a material here. Then we see some metal elements that are there. Uh, this is a suspended bridge over a... Over a water body and uh, by this we understand that the right options are option B tubular steel, option D glass roof, option F helical because that is the shape and G suspended. Next up we have another building. This is the Vitra fire station that was designed by a very famous architect Zaha Hadid in 1993. You have to identify four uh, options that best identify the architectural features of this building and the right options are a tilted planes b movement because there is a visual movement that can be seen in this building d cantilever because we see a big cantilever in the image uh, that is in front and f that is cluster and um, Cluster of metal columns. Here you can see a cluster of metal columns on your screen and the horizontal member at an angle that is there on top of this is the cantilever. So this is another um, dwelling or another structure that you can see. This belongs to the Asian culture and it's coming from some of the other Asian country only. By looking at this image, we have to identify four appropriate terms. Just by looking at this, we understand that this is an example of Japanese architecture. So option A, Japanese will definitely be one of the right options. Then this is a modular unit and um, may, almost all Japanese dwellings are somewhat similar in form. So modular is also a term that can be associated with this building. Lightweight panels can also be associated because most of the panels that are used here are wooden. They are not as heavy as stone or brick panels. And apart from that, we can see some wooden frames that are also there in this image. So the right options are here on your screen. That is A, C, D, and F. And we can identify these just by analyzing the image that is given. Another image is given here and you have to identify the place that is there. And the options are Bhedagat, Ajanta Caves, Patan Nivao, and Kings Valley in Egypt. Just by looking at this image, we can understand that this is the famous Ajanta Caves that is in India. It is one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in India. Another building is given here. This is the Shampali Mod Center for the Unknown and it was designed by Charles Correa again. It is located in the historic riverside area of Bellamin, Lisbon, that is in Portugal. So now we understand that this is something that is in the riverside, which means that we have a great view. And we see that there is a lot of open space, which is looking in the other directions, where people can go and enjoy the view of the river, which means that it is creating a vista, an opening where you can from where you can enjoy the natural view. So option H, vista is the correct answer. We know this just by knowing that there is a river and there is this open space to look at the river. Then uh, there are many other options out of which these three more options are correct because we see the use of stone cladding in this building. The building has a curvilinear form and there are porthole windows that can be seen on the uh, facade of this building. These type of circular or elliptical windows are known as porthole windows. Next question is, 
A wall constructed to resist the pressure of an earth filling is called retaining wall, bow wall, buttress or parapet wall. We know that the walls that are made to retain earth filling or mud and its pressure is known as a retaining wall. Here are some images for your reference. Here you will see that these walls are holding back the earth uh, that is there behind them. So the right option will be A, retaining wall. Next question, the Eiffel Tower Paris is a structure built with. I think this is the most easiest question till now. There are four uh, options that are given of different building materials. But we know that Eiffel Tower is one of the largest metal and one of the first, in fact, metal structures. This is an image for a reference. And we know that the right option is C, that is steel. Next question is, uh, the famous Mysore Palace or Mysore Palace is also known as, here is also an image of the Mysore Palace for your reference. And there are four options, Jagmohan Palace, Amma Vilas Palace, Vadiyar Palace or Amba Vilas Palace. So let's try to understand the basic um, history of Mysore Palace. It is also known as Amba Vilas Palace and it's a historical palace and royal residence that is there in Mysore, Karnataka. It used to be the official residence of the Vardya dynasty and the seat of the kingdom of Mysore. The palace is in the center of Mysore and faces the Chamundi hills to its uh, eastward. And from this, we understand that the alternative name or the actual name for Mysore palace is the Amba Vilas Palace, that is option D. So students, with this, we come to the end of our today's uh, quiz. Uh, we try to bring some important, very relevant questions to the current exam pattern that uh, and the kind of questions that are coming in the exams in the previous years. I hope that it was useful for you. I hope that you could learn something from these questions and um, this might be helpful for your upcoming exam as well. I would like to again uh, let you know that we are starting with some crash course batches for preparation of architectural entrance exams, that is JE Paper 2 and NATA. These new batches are starting on three different dates. There are three batches that are coming, uh, 20th March, 29th March, and 3rd of April. So you can uh, enroll in either of these courses. And um, there are some numbers that are given on your, on your screen. You can contact on these numbers via WhatsApp, or you can call them and enroll for these batches. If you want the presentation that I just showed you and in which had the questions, please DM or WhatsApp on the numbers that are given in the chat. You might find those numbers and you can directly WhatsApp on those numbers and our team will share this presentation. Um, and if you want the previous presentations uh, from our previous live sessions also, you can ask for those presentations as well. And I hope these will help you in... Um, preparing well for your coming exams. At last, I will tell you that if you like this video and if you found these questions helpful, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Uh, we hope and bringing, we hope and we try that we bring more such sessions for you, which will be helpful for your upcoming exam preparations.